Here it is. So here we go, June's together in the kitchen. An amazing pilaf rice recipe right here for you. Get your bag, empty it carefully. There are liquids in there. Here we go. So here are your ingredients. The list is on the right. Just to have a look there at the optionals, creme fraiche and parmesan. So we're prepping the onion. Take the skin off. I've already removed that. And let's go. Let's have no tears. Yeah, so nice straight back. Uh, try not to lean into the onion. That'll always help you. Going from top to bottom like I'm doing there, cutting carefully right through, laying the other half flat on the table so it doesn't make you cry, peeling back any papery skin that's still on there, and we are ready to go. Yeah, just look how I'm getting them flat on the board, guys, just so the uh, enzymes in the onion don't make your eyes water. There we go. So, nice clean board, and we are ready to chop. Taking the head, the, the top off, and then cutting back to the root. Nice straight lines. And then I'm gonna turn the knife over it, and then just cut halfway up. You'll see me do that now. There we go, just underneath my fingers, nice and carefully. And then cutting back a small dice, back towards my hand, okay? Just, just rolling it over now, and just cutting the bits off around the, the root taking it right back to the very very core I'm gonna run the knife through that now here we go so all the bits are nice and small ready for you to use boom easy take your time on this guys if you learn your knife skills same with the other one here we go Bit of speed, whoa, there we go, and it is there. Not a race, but you get the picture, you get the idea, into a container or, or a, a bowl, ready for cooking. We're gonna do all the prep first, because it's quite a bit of chopping on this recipe. Gathering up all the onion, there we go, nice clean board. Ace, carrot. Right, okay, here we are, peeler. This is a French peeler or a speed peeler. Peeling from top to bottom, a great place. If you wanna be a chef, get practicing this, yeah? Get practicing peeling those veg. Uh, and a carrot is a great place to start. There we go, brill, perfect. Clean board. And in with the chopping. Let's go, so. Top off, bottom off, remove those out of the way. And then we're just gonna cut into half to make it safer and easier, into half again. Okay, doing all the pieces the same so you can see that. And then we're just gonna cut through that again uh, along the length just to make sort of big sticks basically. And then we're just cutting through that again just to make a dice, okay? Nothing too fancy, just a rough dice, roughly the same size. You know, you can do those individual sticks or, you know, if there's a couple of boards and a couple of knives, maybe a couple of you can just, uh, you know, compare, see how you're getting on. Uh, little kids will need a little bit of help. It's a bit difficult to cut uh, a carrot with a cutlery knife, but cutlery knives are good for practicing with if you want to use something a little safer. There we go, There, there it is. Just like that, perfect. So gather that up into a container. There's your dice. Courgette now, guys. So same again, very similar to the carrot. Now courgettes are a bit softer, so if you want to have a go, when you've got a, li a little one that wants to use, wants to go, then just just get out a cutlery knife. You know, and maybe they can have a little practice with that. So going into quarters again, reducing the length so it's a bit safer. And then into, oh, these are bigger than sticks, aren't they? Almost like slabs. And then just, I'm keeping these quite chunky, pretty rustic. I'm not getting too flash from my chopping. It's just easy. It's just, you know, if you're coming home and making this, you want you want to be able to have time to do all the things you need to do. So we're not making too much fuss. There we go. Nice and easy, nice and safe. All roughly the same size, so they cook at the same time. That's really important. That's why chefs take so much pride in the chopping because it's the size relates to cookery time. Really, really important. There we go. Into a tub. 
these are dead easy to grow guys as well so if you want to go at growing these in your garden you know if you've got any growing now you, you get you get a good amount off a plant as well so they're really good to grow right the lemon zest so I've just peeled the lemon literally just peeled the zest off the lemon you don't get too much pith which is the white thing in between the lemon uh, peel and the the main bit of the fruit the pith is not really on that zest so it's a really good way of taking it off so just peel it off just running through that into little strips not being too fussy and I'm just gonna go through that again just to make little you know really tiny pieces I'm doing this a little fast but you know if you you work at your speed you work safely you could use a grater for this as well if you don't fancy doing it this way use a grater it's about working to your ability and you being successful with what you know and also what you've got there we go, there's the zest. That's gonna be amazing having a bit of freshness and zesty sort of lemonness to um, to this amazing pilaf rice. So there it is guys, don't throw the zest away, it's just got so much flavor. So next, we're gonna boil the kettle. And you are gonna need one liter, that's one liter of boiling water into the jug when it's boiled nice and carefully, make sure any little hands aren't close to. So one litre. What you're gonna do next is you are gonna get a spoon and pop your stock cube in. Then you're gonna give it a stir around till it's nicely dissolved. If there are any small bits, it'll still dissolve in the pilaf rice as you're stirring it around. But try and get it as dissolved as much as you can. Next, guys, let's get cooking. So saucepan or a deep frying pan, either is fine. You could use a wooden spoon. I've got a rubber, rubber spatula here. I'm going in with the onion and a bit of salt. The salt will help to stop those onions burning. We want to soften those for a few minutes. We don't want to, to fry them. We're just gently sauteing them, okay, just to soften them. That'll take just a few minutes. So we're going in with chopped garlic, okay, just tiny pieces of chopped garlic, a little stir around, letting that saute together, we've got the onion and the garlic in there now. Next guys, in with the carrot, and we're going to go the same again, so the onion's still cooking, the garlic's still cooking, and now the carrot's cooking along with it too, giving it a good stir around, letting them saute together. And remember that bit of salt in there that we put in right at the beginning is just helping to prevent things from burning. It's just drawing a little bit of moisture out. Uh, now that is called osmosis or diffusion. Okay, so just drawing that liquid out from the onion. So when those vegetables are nice and soft, just like that, you can see them softer in with the rice. Okay and we're just gonna give that a good stir together. Often what you refer to as the onions being translucent, so you can always see through them, okay? So here we go, giving that a good stir around, stirring them together. Making sure you're on a medium to high heat, yeah? Nothing, nothing too outrageous, you don't wanna burn the rice. Going in with your stock, Okay, you can have that a bit at a time, you can have that, uh, most of that at once, it doesn't matter too much, but you will have to keep adding some liquid to it to make sure that it's cooked through because that rice is thirsty, it's gonna really absorb a lot of that liquid. Okay. You might find just a bit of the stock cube at the bottom of the jug, I was just looking to see if it's separated there. Making sure the temperature's up high enough. That'll just come up to the boil. And bear in mind that liquid's already quite hot. Now I'm gonna go in with the thyme, okay? You can use any fresh herb, dried herb if you've got it, either's great. Now that thyme, it's quite soft, uh, it's not too woody, so it's fine just to get it in there as it is. If there are any sort of fibrous stems there at the end, I'll just take those out. Yeah, you don't need to make too much fuss, fuss with that. So guys, it's now just let it let it bubble away and let it cook. 
let it cook until the rice is tender and there's not too much water. It might be that you need to add a little bit more liquid. That's fine, you can uh, do it straight from the kettle uh, as it's cooking. But uh, in the last few minutes of cooking, you're gonna add your courgette. That'll probably take four or five minutes to cook, uh, just to soften through. So stirring that through, uh, and at this stage, the rice is probably still not quite cooked. So just letting that bubble away guys, giving it a stir every so often to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. If it is, as it's coming to the end of the cooking time, if it's if the rice still isn't quite cooked, you can add a little bit more liquid. You cook it till you're really happy with how it is, you know? Uh, towards the end, you need to make sure uh, that you've got enough seasoning there, any, uh, if it needs any salt and pepper. And right at the end guys, if you've got some cheese, some parmesan or some cheddar, stir a little bit of that in. Uh, with a little bit of, you could add, you could add creme fraiche or a bit of natural yogurt if you've got it. But you know, even if you haven't got those ingredients, it's still really, really good. Just make sure it's got a really good flavour. So here we go, finishing up. Peas in right at the end, okay? Those peas are green, they're sweet. The longer you leave them in that hot liquid, that hot rice, it's gonna not only kill the color, but it's also gonna kill that really nice, beautiful, natural sweetness. Peas should always be just cooked just for as little time as possible. So all we're doing here is just warming them through in the rice, there's plenty of heat in there. You know, at this stage, you could even turn it off if the rice is cooked, but leave those peas right until the end promise you they are so sweet and delicious so just going in now guys a little bit of optional cheese i've got a little bit of parmesan if you've got some cheddar or some parmesan or you know um even a bit of soft cheese would work really really well and in fact soft cheese would be would be a, a lovely way to combine that creaminess of the creme fraiche and a bit of cheese cheesiness so so yeah that would be a good good option stir it in melt it through nearly ready to eat it. So, lemon zest in, right at the end, just adding a little hint of that beautiful lemon flavor. So, so good. And we're ready to go guys, this is it. We're serving. Here it is. The amazing pilaf rice. Check out the other videos, guys, for lemon posset and the shortbread. Just an amazing dessert. These videos are all available on our YouTube channel, Feast of Gastronomy. I hope you enjoy every single bit.